So yesterday, guys, we had a pretty exciting Dutch Grand Prix with a brilliant fight for victory between Red Bull and Mercedes. Also, Ferrari were in there kind of uh, in the first stint as well. But it was a very exciting fight for the victory. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to analyse just how Max Verstappen won the Dutch Grand Prix going through the entire race, obviously looking at the conspiracy theory of uh, what happened with Yuki Tsunoda uh, midway through the Grand Prix, but looking at you know how from Verstappen's side he was able to win, how Mercedes lost the Grand Prix, and how they definitely could have made in that final uh, 20 laps or so better decisions when it came to strategy, and just how it all happened during the 72 laps at the Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort. But we're going to start before we get into analysing uh, the race and go, you know, through the race as it happened. Let's first get into something very important, which is the tyres that they all started on. So for the top six, obviously the only um, six cars really in the race that could have won the Grand Prix yesterday. The top three, Verstappen, Leclerc, Sainz, the Red Bull, obviously, of Verstappen and the Ferrari cars of Leclerc and Sainz. They decided to start the soft compound tyre. And also Sergio Perez in P5, he started on the soft compound tyre as well. But the two Mercedes cars decided to be, or to start, um, on the medium compound tyres. Obviously, the Mercedes team d decided to start those two uh, drivers on that tyre. And... It was, at the time, a bit of a surprising decision, but it did turn out to be a brilliant strategy decision by Mercedes because straight away, Mercedes had very good pace on that medium compound tyre. Even with Russell, who lost a position at the start to Lando Norris on the same tyre, he was able to get past Norris and then immediately close in on Sergio Perez for P5. So that tyre was immediately working out well. But firstly, looking at... Max Verstappen, uh, from his side, how his first stint went of the Grand Prix. He kept the lead just about from Charles Leclerc. Leclerc did have a decent start uh, right off the grid, but Verstappen cut across and covered him off into turn one, and then built steadily a good gap to Charles Leclerc, which he had to do to protect himself against Leclerc in terms of a undercut. Uh, the gap was about 1.82 seconds for a while, but then suddenly Leclerc's tyres went off and that allowed Max Verstappen, once Leclerc made his first pit stop, which was a lap before Max Verstappen's, uh, allowed Verstappen to build a five second lead. So that kept him in a nice healthy state in the Grand Prix. But further back, we had in the battle for third and fourth, Carlos Sainz and the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton on the medium compound tyres. And ever since the first lap... Lewis Hamilton was very clear to see, by the way, that he was very quick in the Grand Prix because he was har really harassing Carlos Sainz for the entire of Carlos's first stint. Now, it has come out that Carlos actually ha did have damage to his floor, which is or will explain why he was so slow in the Dutch Grand Prix. But it was clear to see that the mediums were working a lot better than the soft compound tyres. Not just when comparing Hamilton to Sainz, but even Hamilton to Leclerc. Because once Leclerc's tyres started to go away, Lewis Hamilton, once uh, Carlos Sainz had pitted about two, three laps before, Lewis Hamilton uh, was uh, immediately starting to catch Leclerc pretty quickly. And once Carlos Sainz pitted and got in for some tyres, or maybe uh, not all of the tyres that you know need to go uh, on the car, you'd say... Uh, Lewis Hamilton was released into clean air and was now putting in some very good lap times in the Mercedes. And it was once Verstappen, Leclerc and Sainz had pitted and Perez as well. It was now a Mercedes 1-2 and it left the two Mercedes cars and the two Mercedes drivers of Lewis Hamilton and George Russell to get on with their race and to put in some good times. And that is what they did. Now, let's quickly compare what the average lap time uh, was for Lewis Hamilton in the first stint compared to Max Verstappen, just to see what the pace was like between the two. Obviously, Max Verstappen, in his first stint, was on the soft compound tyre. Lewis Hamilton was on the medium. And Max, on average, was four-tenths of a second quicker. But we do have to remember 
that for the, say, first half of Lewis Hamilton's first stint, he was stuck behind the Ferrari of Carlos Sainz. So he couldn't really go anywhere, couldn't really show the maximum pace he had um, on that compound of tyre compared to Max Verstappen, again, who was on the soft. But when Lewis Hamilton got into clean air, he was starting to lap about the same pace on average that Verstappen did in the first stint, about a mid 1 minute 16. So in clear air, on the medium tyre, Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes were very, very quick. And with Lewis Hamilton going, uh, and Mercedes obviously in general, going a lot longer into the Grand Prix, it meant that once um, both Mercedes pitted and got onto fresher tyres, that Mercedes would be definitely a threat towards the end of the Grand Prix. And in terms of Max Verstappen, though, he tried his best to claw his way uh, closer to the Mercedes. He did overtake George Russell, I think a lap or two before Lewis Hamilton came in for his first uh, pit stop. And then, yeah, Hamilton came for his pit stop, put the hard compound tyres on, and then was very quick once he put that tyre on. Sergio Perez was uh, dispatched about uh, three, four laps into uh, Lewis Hamilton's um, first or a uh, second stint of the Grand Prix on the hard compound tyres. And then once he was in clean air, he was a few tenths of a second quicker per lap than Max Verstappen and a lot quicker compared to Charles Leclerc, who was at that point in P2. Let's compare... Now, the average lap time difference between Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen in that second stint of the Grand Prix, where Hamilton was on the hard uh, compound and Max was on the medium. So Max's average lap time in that second stint was a 116.1. Lewis's average lap time was a 115.8. The reason it's not a lot quicker for Hamilton compared to Verstappen in the average lap time and it's only three tenths of a second on average he was quicker than Max in that second stint, is because when he got caught up behind Perez, he did do a couple of 1 minute 17 uh, lap times. Uh, so that did affect his um, average lap time uh, calculation in the end. Uh, but in clear air, he was a few tenths of a second quicker per lap. You can go and look for, at the data yourself. He was clearly much quicker than Max Verstappen. And what that was going to throw up was um, if there was no virtual safety cars, red flags or safety cars coming out between, uh, say, the end of the second stint for Max Verstappen and the end of the race, what it was going to create, it was a very, very close and exciting ending to the Grand Prix where Max Verstappen would pit again for the hard compound tyre, most likely, and be only a few seconds behind Hamilton and probably Russell as well, and would have to pass both Mercedes to then win the Grand Prix. There's probably still a decent chance he could have won the Grand Prix anyway, if that's what he had to do, because um, the Red Bull, we know, is still a very quick car. But it was going to be very, very close between the two separate uh, drivers and two separate teams. But then, Yuki Tsunoda played a very important role, it seemed, at the time in the destiny of who was going to win the Dutch Grand Prix. So first off, he stopped on the exit of Turn 3 because he thought the uh, that his tyre or one of his wheels wasn't on properly. But then it was confirmed that, nope, the wheel was on properly, so he slowly came back to the pits. And then... Once he had come back to the pits, uh, I think the team tried to check if there was anything wrong. Then they redid his uh, seat belt up because he did actually undo his belt because he thought he was going to retire from the race when he stopped on the exit of turn three. But then when he got going again, uh, just after he released the pit limiter and got off the pit limiter and got going again on the pit exit, he then said there was an issue. And then they told him, to come out of the pit exit and then stop somewhere safe on the side of the track, which is what he did. And this is what Yuki, um, <coughs> sorry, Yuki Tsunoda had to say in regards to what happened with this issue after the Grand Prix. He said, for me, it was quite clear, especially at the rear. That's why, um, in terms, and he said that, by the way, um, in terms of uh, what the problem was. 
and then he said that's why i got told from my engineer to stop we fitted a new tire again and i confirmed that the same thing's happening i thought first it was just wheel spin happening because it was a hard tire that's why it was low grip but i felt a clear issue that something was going on with the rear or with that rear part and the engineers confirmed there was an issue uh, that's why we stopped he said but if i go back to this quickly um what i want to do is just quickly dispel this conspiracy theory that alpha tauri you know made up a problem to deliberately help their obviously the red bull team obviously red bull own red bull racing uh, f1 and the alpha tauri team as well that is absolute you know complete nonsense basically what happened was sonoda thought the wheel wasn't fitted correctly but then once they had changed the tires the issue was still there and it was towards the rear of the car um, and another thing i want to quickly dispel is people saying um that you know how come they told him to leave the pit exit and then park somewhere safely why couldn't he have just stayed in the pit lane the pit exit when they told him to do that the pit exit is not in the pit lane really um the pit lane is basically you know where the speed limiter is active for the cars the pit exit is on the actual racetrack obviously you're not allowed to go over the white line um, on the pit exit but he was already basically back onto a live racetrack so what they were saying was you know come back out on track and uh or go you know exit the pit lane fully and then find somewhere um to park your car safely so not to cause a massive issue for the marshal so what he did was absolutely fine but another thing i want to quickly say is that to be honest looking back at the race now in hindsight this thing happening with sonoda um you know parking his car eventually causing a virtual safety car that led to max verstappen here you can see making a pit stop and going on to the medium uh onto the hard sorry compound tire and the mercedes made a pit stop to counter that so verstappen didn't gain you know massive amounts of uh time or an advantage having a free pit stop and getting fresher tires on but with yuki sonoda's uh you know parking and causing the virtual safety car in the end it wouldn't really have mattered because valtteri bottas in the alfa romeo he broke down right before the inside of turn one on the pit straight or the end of the pit straight and that caused a full safety car so even though sonoda did what he did in terms of parking his car where he did and causing a virtual safety car there would have been a safety car anyway that would have helped max verstappen and red bull and that is obviously unlucky for mercedes but that is just the way it happens so in the end this whole sonoda issue again i can understand at the time why people might think it was a bit fishy but looking back now with evidence and looking back at the race in hindsight i don't think actually it played the Sonoda thing that big of a role in what happened in the Grand Prix because again if Valtteri or you know if Sonoda had not caused a virtual safety car to happen Bottas's um you know breaking down would have happened probably a lap or two earlier than it did causing the safety car so in the end there was always going to be a safety car period that was going to help Max Verstappen and Red Bull but what's the safety car uh, came out it was now uh because max verstappen decided to pit again and go onto the soft compound tire to protect himself best from the mercedes but also give him uh, you know the best chance to win the grand prix and be on the best tires possible for that final stint of the grand prix mercedes decided to do something quite peculiar in terms of their strategy because when the safety car i think but one lap only took the cars through the pit lane lewis hamilton did not come in for a pit stop but george russell i think opted on his own to you know make a pit stop and to get on the soft compound tire and ultimately this was the wrong decision from mercedes what they needed to do in terms of strategy was well not what they did there were two options really that would have been much better options than what they actually went for to protect themselves from max verstappen and to win the dutch grand prix the i guess 
least good option compared to the other option I'll get into in a second would have been to pit Lewis Hamilton as well. Yes, surrendering the lead to Max Verstappen, but then having Hamilton and Russell on the soft tyre and able to maybe fight Verstappen for the win. Or the best option, which they should have gone for, is to keep Russell out, um, have him obviously in second place, and then use Russell basically to block Max Verstappen getting to Lewis Hamilton and also try and have it so Russell would be getting DRS from the back of Lewis Hamilton once the race got going again to protect himself from Max Verstappen and to keep Lewis Hamilton in the lead and possibly get the team a 1-2 finish as well. That's what Mercedes needed to do and that's obviously where they failed yesterday because what they did was they kept Lewis Hamilton on the tyres that he went on to um, for his, uh, what was it, um, second pit stop. He was on the medium compound tyres that he uh, went on to on the, uh, or during the virtual safety car period. That's, of course, Yuki Tsunoda caused. But obviously that left him um, a sitting duck, really, compared to Max Verstappen. As on the safety car restart, Max Verstappen quite easily went round the outside into turn one and retook the lead and quite clearly won the Grand Prix. And then George Russell on the soft compound tyre a few laps later passed Lewis Hamilton for second. Hamilton eventually would drop down to third place. And they definitely cost not just Lewis Hamilton, but even Russell, I would say, um, a, a good chance at winning the Grand Prix yesterday because... If they had kept it as, you know, Hamilton and Russell 1 and 2 still on the medium tyres and, you know, Verstappen was down to third. Yeah, maybe Verstappen gets past Russell, but if Russell, you know, if he had held up Max for long enough, then that could have helped Lewis build a bit of a lead. And then Max would have to, on, you know, soft compound tyres that would have been wearing out quite a bit towards the end of that Grand Prix... Would have had to have gone to some lengths if Russell had held Max up for a few laps to um, to catch Hamilton and pass him and win the Dutch Grand Prix. But yeah, that's what happened in the end. But let me just quickly get on to what Toto Wolff had to say in regards to what would have happened with Mercedes and Red Bull and Hamilton and Verstappen had there not been a virtual safety car or safety car period in the Dutch Grand Prix. What he said was their simulations... Uh, he said the simulation uh, says that Max would have come out eight seconds behind us with 20 laps to go. But obviously he would have had, uh, he would have probably pitted on the hard at that time. And I think we would have had a fair shot at the win. The race planner said the win is on, tight but on. Verstappen uh, said Wolf would have caught us with six laps to the end. So in a alternate universe, Mercedes probably would have won the race yesterday unless Verstappen produced an amazing comeback in that final whatever uh tw yeah 20 laps that he said there with the simulation that would have been um yeah an incredible job if Verstappen still came through to win the Grand Prix but Mercedes would have had definitely a very good chance to win the Grand Prix but at the end of the day yeah the simulation said they had a very good chance but when a virtual safety car or safety car comes out, you know, you need to adapt. We've said this with Ferrari before when it comes to strategy. When something happens in a race that changes the complexion of the Grand Prix in terms of race strategy, you've got to react and adapt to what is going on. And Mercedes didn't really do that with that final safety car period um, at the Dutch Grand Prix. And that's ultimately why they ended up not winning the race. A race that, to be honest, they probably should have won on pure pace, they had, I'm pretty sure, if you look back at the race um, and just the lap time difference for the entire Grand Prix, I'm pretty sure Mercedes were the quickest team yesterday um, in clear air. So, a shame that they didn't deliver on it, but they are getting closer, no doubt about it, to a race win. And hopefully, they'll have another big go at getting a race win before the end of the season and it wouldn't be too bad to see them actually get a win because it's not just been this Grand Prix where they could have won a race could have won at Silverstone could have won in Hungary had things more so gone their way so yeah we'll see if they can get another win but 
ultimately, it was Max Verstappen winning his home Grand Prix for a second year in a row. But guys, that's it for the analysis of what happened there and in the fight for victory for the Dutch Grand Prix. Let me know in the comment section down below, how did you think the whole battle went? Um, what did you think of the Yuki Tsunoda issue and what I had to say on it? Um, and in terms of race strategy, what should have Mercedes or what should Mercedes have done with um, Lewis Hamilton and George Russell, uh, Russell? Should they have pitted both of them onto the soft compound tyres during that safety car? Or should they have kept both of them out to protect themselves against uh, Verstappen with um, superior track position? Let me know in the comments. And also let me know, without any virtual safety car or safety car period, who do you think would have won the Grand Prix if there was no... Um, you know, none of that virtual safety car or safety car stuff. Let me know in the comments section down below. But guys, until my Italian Grand Prix preview show live on the channel on Thursday night at 6pm UK time, it has been me, Chazar HD. Goodbye.